Hello everyone and welcome back to the sessions on quantitative methods for CFA level 1. In this class we are continuing with the important topic testing of hypothesis. Now when we started this topic we have learned the hypothesis testing procedure not all the steps in detail but we have seen what are the steps. Do you remember that there are in total six steps that get involved which begins with state the hypothesis. Now past few classes we have thoroughly practiced stating the null and alternative hypothesis H0 and H1 correct. We have learnt how to state the hypothesis. Now the second step select the appropriate test statistic. I have never taken you to the details of this second step because all the examples that we have done by far including the examples that I am going to do ahead today in this class are all one stereotyped examples I mean one simple category examples that is conducting test about a population mean. So you are trying to test a population mean for that you have taken a sample you have observed the sample mean maybe from one sample or from multiple samples which or through which you are creating sampling distribution and through that sampling distribution whatever is your observation you are trying to draw inference about the population mean that is the focus point of all the examples that we have taken by far which we can put it in one heading as test of population mean. Now there may be various other tests which I have not introduced and I do not even want to talk about those now. So in the second step we have focused only on one typical type of test that is about testing the population mean. Now if you can recollect earlier we had a discussion about Z distribution and T distribution. Z distribution which follows the standard normal distribution. T distribution is still a distribution which tends to be normal but it is not a normal distribution. So over there we have certain limitations where T distributions may not resemble exactly the normal distribution and therefore when the T distribution has to be applied whatever content that you have learned by far is all about Z distribution. T distribution if applied you have to handle it little differently. So that will yet come under the same category of test that is testing population mean but then it will not be a Z test, it will be a T test that we will apply. But again as I said right now I do not want to enter into the domain of the different types of test statistics. I am just keeping the second step aside. Third step we have gone substantially ahead means we have talked in detail what exactly is the significance level. When we are testing population mean and we find that the sample mean is different from the population mean which is the hypothesized mean, little bit of difference is ok, too much of difference is identified as significant difference. Now whether the difference is significant or insignificant that depends on the alpha that you choose alpha is just the symbol used for significance level. We have learnt how to set significance level for left tail test, right tail test and a two tail test. In case of a two tail test the significance level gets divided into both the tails. Then state the decision rule, how to state the decision rule we have learnt even this when would you accept the null hypothesis and when would you reject the null hypothesis 
we have learned that actually we don't technically say that accept the null hypothesis we are always testing to reject the null hypothesis so either we reject the null hypothesis or we will say that we fail to reject the null hypothesis in exam always avoid using the terms accepting the hypothesis because your test is never about acceptance of hypothesis your test is about rejection of hypothesis now this step calculate sample statistics we have not yet discussed in this class today we are going to introduce this and make a decision regarding the hypothesis we are going to discuss this as well in the class today now out of these six steps you tell me which steps we have actually learned by far properly step 1 step 3 and step 4 1 3 and 4 we have learned 5 and 6 we are going to address in this class second step details I am not touching now right now if you ask me the appropriate test statistic we have observed only one test statistic by far that is Z only the Z statistic is what we have observed by far and because we are following the standard normal distribution and we continue to do the same thing in this class as well so what I am going to do to bring you the flavor of the fifth and sixth step now I am not putting emphasis on the earlier part that is significance level and stating the hypothesis so now you have already got a little bit of experience on how to identify h1 and h0 h1 is the alternative hypothesis h0 is the null hypothesis in the examples that I am going to show you today hypothesis will be stated in the example that means you do not have to use your brain for stating the hypothesis it is only the later stages and later steps that you have to focus on so let us do one thing let us take up examples to understand this whole thing and let us begin with example number 9 now in this example the null hypothesis that is h0 and alternative hypothesis h1 the example itself is stating that fine what is h1 mu less than 50 what is h0 mu greater than or equal to 50 fine that means uh, we have to definitely deal with the mu mu stands for the mean that means it is implied that the hypothesis test is about the population mean in fact the last line in that example also reads and confirms the same test the hypothesis about the population mean and draw the conclusion now what other thing inform to you sample size n equal to 36 sample mean x bar equals to 47 sample standard deviation s equals to 12 level of significance 5 percent now if you observe what all is informed and based on that you would want to analyze the entire scenario observe one thing the distribution over here is definitely a normal distribution unfortunately we have no idea about the population variance or the population standard deviation that means population standard deviation is not known but the distribution is normal why are we concluding that the distribution is normal everything depends upon the sample size look at this sample size 36 if the sample size is greater than or equal to 30 it will be considered as large samples and as per the central limit theorem irrespective of the nature of distribution for the sampling distribution if the number of samples are exceeding 30 or even equal to 30 it will be treated as a large sample size and it will tend to be a normal distribution that means here we are definitely going to follow the z distribution now the sample standard deviation is known as 12 so what we have to do if you can recollect while learning sampling distribution we have learned standard error do you remember how to compute standard error it is 
the standard error that will be coming over here into computation. So I will show you how you have to proceed ahead with the solution. Let me in fact remove myself away from the screen. Look at one thing h0 mu greater than or equal to 50 already given in the question h1 mu less than 50. Now what is the test type? Test type is for test of population mean. Now what is the nature of test? Here you have to identify whether it is one tail test or two tail test and if it is a one tail test whether it is a left tail test or a right tail test. So this case you observe h1 it is always h1 that can clarify the nature of test h0 cannot always clarify the nature of test so h1 h1 specifying that mu less than 50 which indicates that your critical region has to lie to the lower side that means this is definitely 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 a left tailed test level of significance that is alpha is given in the question already as 5% since it is a left tail test the entire 5% significance level is placed in the left tail of the normal distribution. The critical values now we have already experienced one thing that for the left tail test if it is a 5% significance level the critical value of z has to be negative 1.645 you know it already. So what will be the rejection rule if the calculated z value from the sample data is less than negative 1.645 we reject the null hypothesis that is h0. So please carefully write up this part of the solution and then I take you ahead. Alright friends moving forward now what we do we calculate the test statistic. So how to compute z value it is x bar minus mu divided by standard error keep in mind one thing this is the formula that we have learned for standard error. Do you remember standard error is nothing but the standard deviation of the sampling distribution I repeat again standard error is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution x bar is the mean of the sampling distribution and mu 0 is the hypothesized mean. So all these values are given in the question. So sample mean that is x bar is given as 47 hypothesized population mean mu 0 is given as 50 sample standard deviation s it is 12 and sample size is 36. Now just wait and watch one thing over here imagine what would have happened if the sample size was not 36 but say 26 then we would not consider this as a large sample and because the sample standard deviation is given population standard deviation as well as population variance it is unknown you know you will not be able to apply the z distribution you will have to adopt t distribution that will come under the t test which will be learnt later right now because we are dealing with the large sample we are continuing to apply the z test. Now let us substitute these values in this formula and compute the result so 47 minus 50 divided by 12 upon square root of 36 so if you solve the denominator part first square root of 36 will be 6 and 12 by 6 will give you 2 so what you get in the numerator now 47 minus 50 will give you minus 3 divided by 2 minus 3 by 2 will be minus 1.5 so the calculated value of z is negative 1.50 so please write up this part of the solution as well and then I take you ahead all right friends I'm sure you have completed this whole thing now allow me to put forward a little bit of explanation if you can recall how did we compute z scores in normal distribution long back when we were learning chapter 3 that is the statistical measures of assets return 
we have learned normal distribution right over there correct when we have learned normal distribution over there what did we come across z scores were computed by taking x minus mu divided by standard deviation i repeat x minus mu divided by standard deviation here it is the sampling distribution so x is getting replaced by x bar x is getting replaced by x bar mu is getting replaced by hypothesized mu that is mu 0 and in place of standard deviation we are putting standard error because standard error itself is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution do not forget that we have learned these concepts in sampling distribution that is why connection of these concepts it is so important so standard deviation of a sampling distribution itself is a standard error so when we learned standard error in the earlier chapter that is sampling distribution we have learned the definition of standard error maybe that time you did not find the definition that relevant and this is the reason many students tend to forget but now i am helping you recollect it standard error is defined as the standard deviation of the sampling distribution so if standard error is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution right now what we are studying is not a sample but a sampling distribution as a result we are just finding the z score that is why the calculated value of z will be compared with the critical value of z from the z table correct ultimately z table gives you what values z scores so what you have to now do is take the solution ahead and in the solution further what you need to do you identify the standard normal distribution at the center it is 0 where mu equals to 50 keep in mind one thing this is not the population mean this is the hypothesized population mean which is assumed to be 50 and we have the critical region lying on the left tail so if the sample statistic fall between 0 and the critical region there will be a possibility of the mean lower than 50 but not significantly lower however if it falls below the critical value all these red markings it would indicate that the mu is definitely falling below 50 significantly means the difference is significant so what is not the critical region we are marking with this blue color what is the critical region we are marking with this orange color so this part is 5 percent the remainder part is 95 percent now simple point is you need to see your critical values over here which we have already defined your critical value will be negative 1.645 now you have to check where does negative 1.5 lie negative 1.5 is the calculated value of z that is the value of the test statistic that you computed now look at one thing where does it fall because it is negative it will fall to the left side of 0 but is it negative beyond minus 1.645 or under it the answer is minus 1.5 will fall over here somewhere that is between 0 and negative 1.645 as a result it is not falling in the critical region so we can conclude over here the calculated z value does not fall in the critical region i want you to carefully take note of this part of the solution and then i take you ahead all right friends once you have completed writing this whole thing let us move ahead and continue further make a decision calculated z value is negative 1.50 critical z value is negative 1.645 since the calculated z value is greater than the critical z value and does not fall in the critical region we fail to reject the null hypothesis now interpret the result by failing to reject the null hypothesis we conclude that the null hypothesis will be kind of accepted because we fail to reject it so we would say mu is 
greater than or equal to 50. So, please write up this last part of the solution and with that the solution comes to an end. All right friends, I am sure you have completed this whole thing. Let us move ahead and take up the next example that will be example number 10. Now again in this example null and alternate hypothesis are mentioned. Alternative hypothesis H1 states mu greater than 50. So null hypothesis has to be mu less than or equal to 50. Now look at one thing because H1 states mu greater than 50 it is a one tail test and it has to be a right tail test. Now we have learned these basic things in the earlier classes already. Sample size 36, sample mean x bar 53, sample standard deviation 12, level of significance 5 percent. Test the hypothesis about the population mean and draw the conclusion. Now very simple, you know how to solve it. You state the h0 and h1 which were already informed in the question. Test type, it is about test of population mean. Nature of test, it will be a right tail test. Level of significance that is alpha is 5 percent. Since it is a right tail test, entire 5 percent significance level is placed in the right tail of the normal distribution. Critical values, the critical z value for a 5 percent significance level in the right tail is positive 1.645. What will be the rejection rule? If the calculated z value from the sample data is greater than positive 1.645, we reject the null hypothesis that is H0. So write up this much and then I take you ahead. Alright friends, once you have completed writing this much, let us move ahead and continue further. Calculate the test statistic. So exactly the way you computed earlier, it is x bar minus mu 0 divided by standard error. Standard error will be computed by taking sample standard deviation divided by the square root of sample size that is s by square root of n. So all the values are given to you in the example x bar is 53 hypothesized population mean mu 0 equals to 50 and sample standard deviation is 12 sample size is 36. So when you put up these values what you get in the numerator is positive 3 and the denominator will be 2. So 3 by 2 will give you positive 1.5. So the calculated z value is positive 1.50. Write up this calculation and then I take you ahead. Alright friends, once you have completed writing this much, let us move ahead. And now what we identify in the standard normal distribution. At the center we have mu equal to 50. The critical region will be lying on the right tail any value which is under the right tail will be not enough to reject the null hypothesis. If the test statistic goes beyond the critical value of z, then the null hypothesis stands rejected. So area where we fail to reject will be this 95 percent which is marked with blue and this orange area which indicates 5 percent significance level is indicator of the critical region. So 95 percent we will not be able to reject the null hypothesis, 5 percent where we reject the null hypothesis in terms of the region. So the critical value we have already defined that it will be positive 1.645. The calculated z value is positive 1.5, positive 1.5 definitely will not go beyond 1.645, it will be under that. That means it is not falling in the critical region, it is coming in the non-critical region. So we would conclude that the z value does not fall in the critical region. Write up this much and then I take you ahead. Alright friends, once you have completed writing this whole thing, let us move ahead and continue further. Make a decision. Calculated z value positive 1.5, critical z value positive 1.645. As the calculated z value is less than the critical z value and does not fall in the critical region, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. 
interpret the results by failing to reject the null hypothesis we conclude that h0 mu less than or equal to 50 indirectly we will have to accept the null hypothesis. So, write up this last part of the solution and uh, then we move to the next example. All right friends, I am sure you have completed writing the entire solution. Let us move on to the next example that is example number 11. Now again in this example you can see H0 and H1 have been given but the moment you look at H1 it indicates mu not equal to 50 means if mu is less than 50 null hypothesis gets rejected if mu is greater than 50 still null hypothesis get rejected that means the critical regions will be falling on both the sides or both the tails so this is definitely a two tailed test sample size sample mean sample standard deviation and level of significance informed to you test the hypothesis about the population mean and draw the conclusion so the only different thing that we found over here in this example that it is a case of a two tailed test so how would you present your solution in your solution you first mention h0 and h1 you mention the test type that is it is the test of population mean nature of test it is a two tailed test significance level that is alpha is 5 percent since it is a two tailed test the significance level 5 percent is split between both tails of the normal distribution. So critical values you know one thing when it is a two tailed test with 5 percent significance level the critical values will be positive and negative 1.96. So critical values fall on both the tails negative 1.96 as well as positive 1.96 so the style of writing over here could be plus or minus 1.96 because both the values are critical rejection rule if the calculated z value from the sample data is beyond the critical values we reject the null hypothesis that is h0 so please write up this much and then i take you ahead Alright friends, once you have completed writing this much, let us move ahead and continue further. Calculate the test statistic. So, same formula for z you will apply x bar minus mu 0 divided by standard error. Define all the variables along with their given values in the question. And once you define these values, you can substitute all these values in your calculation. 56 minus 50 in the numerator will give you 6 and 12 divided by square root of 36 in the denominator what you will get is 12 by 6 that is 2. So, it is going to be 6 by 2 that will be positive 3. So, the calculated z value is plus 3. So, please write up this as well and then I take you ahead. Alright friends, once you have completed writing this much, let us move ahead and continue further. Standard normal distribution, this time you know that it is going to be a case of two tailed test. So, the critical region will be falling on both the sides. If the mean is different from 50, it will be possible that it is not having a significant difference or it is having a significant difference all red markings are indicator of significant difference blue markings are indicator of insignificant difference wherever it is insignificant difference we have marked with the blue region which is indicator of non critical region the region marked with orange color is indicator of critical region which will be half of 5 percent that is alpha by 2 alpha is 5 percent alpha by 2 will be 2.5 percent. So, 2.5 percent on each side will be the critical region and 95 percent will be the non critical region which is in the middle. Now, the critical values we already know it will be positive and negative 1.96 both side we have critical regions. So, the calculated value of z falls 
in the critical region to the right correct because it was plus 3 plus 3 will go beyond 1.96 so it is definitely falling somewhere in this critical region to the right so please write up this much and then I take you ahead. Alright friends, once you have completed writing this much, let us move ahead and now we make a decision. The calculated z value is plus 3 and the critical z value is even though it is plus and minus 1.96, but for the situation that we got over here, we will treat it as if it is a plus 1.96 and we find that the calculated z value is going beyond 1.96 to the positive side or to the right side. So, since the calculated z value is beyond the critical z value, we reject the null hypothesis. We interpret the result now. By rejecting the null hypothesis, we conclude that it is the alternate hypothesis that would be accepted, which indicates that mu not equal to 50. So, please write up this last part of the solution. With that, we put an end to this session as well. Thank you very much.